13. Resolution affirming the need of the second circuit court judge to Sawyer County. Mr. Chairman, may I comment? This arose in public safety, and apparently we voted as a resolution for uh, uh, putting it back onto the full county board for their approval, and apparently we didn't have the authority to do that, did we, Tom? Excuse me? It was not a resolution at the time. It was just for discussion only. The agenda had stated discussion notes. Yeah. Second judge. So apparently we weren't supposed to vote on it as a resolution. Well, the resolution sits in front, and it was the discussion in the will of the Public Safety Committee along with the presentation from the members. So, um, however we have it before it now, it's now stated on this agenda that's been publicly noticed for this, uh, for this resolution. I think it's incumbent, I think it's, uh, I think it's a necessary need. I think it's also uh, our duty and responsibility as, as county board supervisors to recognize the criminal justice needs of this county and that's embodied in this resolution, which is a study that proves that the caseload that we have for the current judge uh, warrants consideration from the Wisconsin legislature for a second judge. But we can't even get that kind of consideration until this county board shows support for that idea. So, And we supported it unanimously at our committee. Right. And uh, we did it in good faith. I don't why we can't continue with it onto the coming board. Well, it's a resolution affirming the need, so it's up here for consideration from the county. Well, I make a motion to approve, approve the resolution affirming the need for a you know, second uh, circuit court judge. And I second that motion. There's a motion by Mr. Pauls and second by Mr. Slender to approve. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up a couple of points on, on what this means. Um, by passing the resolution, you are showing your support for a second judge. What happens next is, is they're proposing legislation at the state level that would um, authorize a second judge for Sawyer County. If that goes through, then that commits you to that second judge, which means a second courtroom with a jury box and all that goes with that. Um, there is some additional funding that comes with that. They do um, provide another $43,000 per branch uh, funding, which would help for uh, additional uh, clerk of court staff. Uh, it wouldn't fund a judicial assistant if a second judicial assistant is needed. Um, so there would be some ongoing costs, specifically if we did have another uh, courtroom or, or had to build another facility, there would be other utility costs and other such things too. So you are committed to operating costs as well as capital costs. Um, that, and I'm not trying to say it's not a good idea, I just want you to be aware of what you are committing to when you, when you contemplate this resolution. Well, we make the same kind of commitment when we commit to the sheriff's deputies. We make the same kind of commitment when we make the commitment to the district attorney's staff. We make the same kind of commitment when we commit to the libraries. I mean, you know, I understand that there's administrative cost to just about everything that we're doing, but we also have uh, a docket that is in, almost impossible for anybody to have access to. We have people sitting in jail waiting for time to get in front of the judge so that they can be released from jail. And we have the second courtroom. It may be expanded up for the jury room, so I mean, I'm, I'm hesitant with the idea of, of having this being brought forward and fraught with concerns because this, the, the need for it has been established through a study. And we're asking, the next step is literally to ask the Wisconsin legislature to ask, you know, to, to give us consideration in Surrey County. Now, I know the press is here, but we know that Madison I don't even think they understand that Wisconsin extends north of Highway 8. So we're taking a chance by even being recognized by the legislature. I understand the need for this, and I know it's pretty much inevitable, but in a way it's not the same commitment that we're making with those examples you showed, Jim. 
Right. Because we're going to put somebody else in charge. Nope, we've got to build over here. We want it this big, this tall, this large, this accommodations. We lose control of that. I just want to make sure everybody understands it. We're not going to decide how big and when and where you're building. It's going to be the state telling us. And we have no idea what those numbers are going to be. In the state of Wisconsin, do we have one judge working day shift and one judge working night shift like they do in other states? Other states? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, the, the sovereign capacity of the state of Wisconsin and is the sovereign capacity of the county. If you want to get a judge to work a night shift, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure the inmates will be up. You want to get the DA to come in at midnight? The deputies are working 24 hour shifts, so I would get them in there. I don't know, this business where we, we have to add on construction kind of a little bit scary there. Well, the building itself right now is what, 1960? I mean, we have literally right now, the way that this room is set up, it's unsafe for this judge right now. And if someone comes in through here, that's a straight shot, straight shooter, boom, boom. I mean, we're talking about renovations, we're talking about the need for a second judge. So, I we're. I think we're trying to conflate the expenses of what could happen in the future against what we're trying to affirm to the Wisconsin legislature right now. And I don't understand why we don't make that door there or our main door in and lock these doors and keep them locked. That would take care of that problem. I agree. Yeah. Yes. I agree with everybody that it's, it's something that sounds like it's needed, but I also have the concerns of other people that. You know, where are we going to get this money? This, you know, a judge is not going to be cheap. Comes out to expense some legislative allocation. So everything that we do, we need to expand on the facility or make a new facility, is it going to be paid for by the state? No, but the judge's salary and the support for that comes from, I mean, the, so the DA salary comes from the state legislature, the sheriff's salary, the judge's salary, the second judge's salary, and then if we're really going to talk about the cost-effective analysis, so if we get a second judge, we're able to provide more services in terms of not just making people come through here, and go through trial, and go through jail. We're going to have a judge that's going to be able to participate in drug court. We can do diversions. We can um, figure out another alternative to sentencing. We can do uh, different type of um, prevention training that helps you know people who. You know, the, the lock them up and throw away the key mentality that we discussed in the budget discussion is, is not working. We need to figure out a way to provide alternative forms. So if we're going to talk about, you know, the cost that is for a separate secretary or judicial assistant, we also need to look at the cost savings that's going to be when we have people being diverted from sitting in jail. We have people that are going to have a, a time to meet with the DA and sit in front of a judge rather than having a, a, a you know, a three minute, Plea discussion on someone who's going to, you know, compromise and sit six days in, or six years in jail, ten years on, on probation. We're going to be able to do alternate dispute or alternate uh, sentencing so that they go to, to, to services. They get um, treatment instead of going to jail. So there's going to be cost benefits that's going as well too. But I don't see anybody discussing what the positive benefits is going to be with reducing the judge's workload. Oh, and I totally agree with all you, you all you're saying there. I just was asking as far as where the expenditures are going to be for the county itself. And along with what you're saying is what you do with programs, there's also a possibility of getting a veterans program in there to do just that's something that's come up recently also. Right. So I mean I I totally agree is a great benefit. I just want to look at the cost of it. And I was under the understanding that the criminal justice coordinator was going to cut down our case loads and lower the other court. And I know not immediate, but in the next two or three years. The what's going to cut it down to be? Criminal justice coordinator. Criminal justice coordinator. My question, does the resolution stand? that we made at uh, public safety, or do we have to postpone it until next month and they can, to make a vote on it? We have it posted right now in front of us. Yeah. Team. So, I mean, public safety is a recommendation. <coughs> right. It's a non-binding recommendation, but we've got it posted. It's, it's been made public notice. We can vote on it now as it's presented. Did we hear any other motion? Yeah. 
There's a motion in the second the report. Report. Okay, Jim, we're talking about something that we have no idea what the actual costs are going to be. If we vote to go with this program, are we going to be stuck and have to take it? And all of the expenses, construction, whatever all goes with it? Is that a done deal then? This is a little bit more about the finance side of this. This is a resolution to show that this county supports having a second judge for consideration of the Wisconsin legislature. So the bill hasn't even been drafted in terms of consideration for the Wisconsin legislature. But we can't be in it until we show support for it. So if we're worried about you know, building an extra parking lot so that the judge has a safe place to park, maybe we shouldn't support a second judge. Yes. Actually, it was the DCA. It's the, the 10th Judicial District. Um, his district, the, the, his name is Ron Harper, I think Don Harper, Don. brought a study that showed, and there's a, there's a yearly analysis of all the judicial districts in the state of Wisconsin, which shows what the, what the ranking is for the need for judicial services. And Sawyer County has been in the top 10 for like the last probably 10 years. This is the first year that Surrey County has ranked as the number one, which means that our judge that's currently working right now is handling an FTE load of like 1.75. And so we're at the point now where this is something that can be considered by the Wisconsin legislature in terms of its allocation. So, but only that, that le the legislature can only consider that if the county supports the idea of a second judge. Now, does it come with cost? It absolutely comes with cost. But if we don't do the cost, then we're left with the one judge doing two jobs and no docket, and then we have a reduction in terms of how a DA is going to sentence because there's only so much space on the docket, and then we're left with jails that are full because people can't get in front of a judge because the judge is completely packed. I mean, this is. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on a couple of questions that came up. Um, Mr. Bassett asked about our, our uh, cost uh, commitment, and that, that is the point I was trying to bring up, and I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other, I'm just trying to give you the facts that if, and, and the um, legislature, I mean, the thing that we're doing tonight is timely because they are going forward with that in October uh, with the state legislature. So it is important that you contemplate this this evening, which is unfortunate because it would be nice to get more details about it. However, this is where we're at. And so it goes to the legislator in October or proposed at that point. If they do pass it, that does commit you to those costs, um, which is why I brought it up. It's not to say that that's not a needed thing or anything bad about it. It's just one of the facts that you need to consider. Um, Mr. Sleater stated something about we don't have control over the size or whatever of the courtroom. We do have, as a county, you are funding whatever it is would need to be built for that. So you do have some control over what those costs could be, but the judicial branch or whoever they are has the authority to say whether you've met the standards, you know, the, the Supreme Court standards on what a courtroom needs to look like. They can say this meets it or doesn't need it, and so there is some give and take on what needs to be built there. But the county is in control of where they build it, how they build it, what they build, if anything. Um, so you do have some control over that. And then the, the workload, uh, Sawyer County is number one. The workload for judicial officers, 1.44, uh, which is the highest ranking uh, out of all the counties. Yes. Um, we had a lot of discussion on this, on public safety. We were told if we did this, the benefits, the money that we would save, correct? Yes. Sending them out, um, sitting in jail over their 30, 60 days, whatever. Um, and it was discussed thoroughly and it was decided that the money we would be saving, correct, Craig, you were there, um, would, would help with this. That there is a need. You know, it's, it's costing us crazy for shipping these, these people to different counties. I don't remember the exact amount, but, you know, we're, under, we're understaffed at the Sheriff's Department. We're full to the top. 
and now all of a sudden we're sitting here worried about what it's going to cost. We know this needs to happen. The second part, and this is the same analysis that we had that Helen makes reference to, is that so if this legislation, if this legislation survives the scrutiny that had that is proposed in October, and everything works out where it lines up and goes in definitely Surrey County's favor, the impact of 2019. Exactly. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Schneider, I respectfully ask you to get the chair's recognition before you start speaking. I did have my hand in there. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see to speak. So it's just a courtesy to everybody. Yes, I said that there would be financial concerns that we had no control over. I understood we would have some control. I got it. Uh, but Jim and Helen are exactly right. These are going to be benefits. Uh, can I tell you what those benefits are right now? No, but we're going to be saving a lot of money. I'm going to vote in favor of this. I'd like to call the vote and I think it will pass. You also have to remember that we just approved that when a criminal justice coordinator that's going to help. This all dovetails very nicely. I just did the same thing I criticized Jim for. I apologize. But, Dale, you're Okay, we're going to get some benefits, but we have no idea what the cost is going to be. How can you make a decision to do whatever, even though you're told it's a step in the right direction, which which I kind of agree with. It's just that we don't know, we're going to be absolutely blind as to where we're going to come out financially at the end of that deal. We have no idea. We're spending money blindly. We have respect. We haven't spent a dime yet. Well, I know, but and we won't be spending a dime in eight, 2018. Um, this will be probably come along in 2019, correct? So we'll be actually voting on as far as the budget goes next year for this, because we'll, we'll have more information on it. But I agree with at least it looks like at least 80, 90 percent of the people. But this is required. The, the cost. <clears throat> I apologize for bringing up the cost if I was the one, but uh, it's irrelevant. We don't, we, at this point, we don't even need to worry about the cost because, as they said, the benefit outweighs the cost and could even help out the cost. How do you know that if you don't know what the cost is going to be? Because right now, I mean, I worked in the jail system for seven years. I know what goes on over there and, and how many they have out of county, how much it costs, housing out of county, all that kind of stuff. So eventually, by having these people, as Mr. Slinger said, going through the process faster than they are now, we're not spending all that money to house them, to feed them, all that kind of stuff. So in the long run, it's going to pay off. That's my business. Mr. Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Every year when we make a budget tonight, we're putting ourselves at the mercy of what the federal government mandates and what the state government mandates. So this really isn't all of that new of a situation for us. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> 